At Equitas, our mission focus is clear. Accurate, efficient systems the future can depend on. Breaking new ground, whether it's on the front line or the back 40. Drug research, fraud detection, are monitoring critical infrastructure at home or outside the wire, in cyberspace or your personal space. Being on the cutting edge, obstacles should never be seen as insurmountable. Bring your data to life and enrich your environment. Build the impossible. Protect the most vulnerable. Don't compromise on privacy. Execute and empower. When they count on you, count on us. Giving you the power to innovate faster than ever before. Valuable insights in an instant. It's about getting it done, finding the solution, getting in and getting home. <laughs> the ever-evolving watchful eye. It's more than just a tool. Protect what is yours. Good morning and welcome to Equitus. My name is Rob Gittery. I'm the founder and CEO of Equitus. And today I have something very exciting to show you. In fact, it's a game changer in how the defense industry can now design, build, and deliver intelligent solutions that are vital to our national security. But first, a quick introduction on Equitus. So Equitus is a small and unusual company, and we're located in Clearwater, Florida. Our employees are the owners of the company, and our employees drive every innovation that we make. But why do we select Clearwater to be as a place to be? Uh, that's because, you know, being in Florida, we're able to select from the very best of those that have current and former military ties to an area that's really most noted for special operations. But second, we're able to recruit and retain incredible talent that's coming out of the, some of the best universities in the South. We seek and we hire the very best technical minds, those that have a, a true passion for innovation, but especially those that don't relate to the cultural norms of Silicon Valley. So you might have seen this logo before. This is a logo that we've been using now for a couple of years, but it's more than just a logo. This is a mindset, and it, and it keeps us continually focused on creating the very best technology for our national security. And unlike much of our competition, our technology is never going to be available or sold to our adversaries. So uh, back to some tech fun. We promised something amazing today, and now it's time to tell you what it is. Now, you know, some years ago when I was much younger, I watched Steve Jobs unveil the original iPod. And when he did so, he, he could have talked about it from a technical approach. He could have told you about the electronics, the software, system speed, capabilities, ports, battery life, and, and portability, but he had a, a way with words. And what he did was he simply held up an iPod and he said, it's 1,000 songs in your pocket. Now, I'm, I'm not gifted in his way of words, but I'm gonna do my own, my own version of this with Equitas 5 Open Fabric. So much like Steve Jobs, I have my own prop. And I'm gonna tell you what Equitas 5 is. It's basically 1,000 data types in one context. And the context can be whatever you need it to be. So Open Fabric is not a one-trick platform, but it's, it's a technology foundation for nearly any type of intelligence solution that you and your company desire to build. It can be deployed anywhere that you want it to be. You own the data. You add capabilities all around it as you see fit, and you control the entire data life cycle. One of the most important aspects of Equitus Open Fabric is the advanced nature of the science that's already been included in, in it, and, and the way that it's been specifically developed to address exactly the types of data that national security clients desire to converge. The platform can be adapted and easily modified to deliver capabilities that enable most any intelligence use case. So I already told you that it's all of your data in one context, but let's get more specific. What's inside of Open Fabric? So in order to explain this to you, I'm going to use a little use case that I hope will help you to better understand it. 
So I've got a slide over here and I want you to take a look at it. On the left, you have all of your clients' data. You have thousands of different data types, different formats, different sources and origins and classifications. And each data source is usually found in a system or application that you're using and you might want to retain. But inside of Open Fabric is hundreds of data processing pipelines for thousands of data types that finds, reads, analyzes, and normalizes that data into a single, highly efficient, and easily scalable graph data fabric. And it does so non-intrusively, leaving legacy applications and data untouched for continued usage in the way you're already using them. But now that data is also in here. So the data, the data analytics that's inside the data processing pipeline includes uh, deep language models, duplicate consolidation, bottom-up security labeling, versatile ontologies, dynamic schema generation, uh, and, and specifically a client-owned data lifecycle. So now continuing with our use case, how do you use that data? Well, I, my first answer is however you need to. Because on the right, this Equitas 5 Open Fabric provides endless ways to utilize that converged data with, pow with powerful integrated analytics and an open design that allows a defense company or an organization or to tailor a, its own system, its own tools, dashboards, data flows, and processes to whatever use case you may desire to build to. So what kind of analytics are already in there? What kind of analytics are in here? centrality, betweenness, thematic clustering, geospatial and temporal attribute generation and correlation, even object detection, facial recognition, line of sight and proximity determination. So when we deliver this to you, Open Fabric is delivered as a ready to run containerized SDK or platform, either way, that includes tools, visualizations, applications and analytics that probably already meet 90% of any technical defense intelligence requirement. So now you don't have to recreate or build supporting technology that enables you to ultimately create the capabilities that you're trying to get to on your government contract. So instead, you can focus on what's unique about your client, your mission, their challenges, and you can put your best and brightest personnel on building solutions that the client will see touch and use, and you don't have to recreate all of the underlying technologies that make it possible. Now, we also include our own suite of tools, but you don't have to use that tool, those tools. The, the tool suite that's inside of Open Fabric, although powerful, is really there to serve as development models for the solutions that ultimately your team will envision. So, some nice to know facts about open fabric. Um, you know, because of the n entirely new technology design, uh, it's 100% scalable from small deployable servers all the way to enterprise level data centers and cloud. And because it's true graph databasing, it's scalable to petabytes, when in fact most of the intelligence systems that are in use today run into processing issues at the terabyte level. How are we going to get to next generation intelligence when we're trapped at the terabyte level? And that's why the new technology, this type of technology, is so important that you use this as a foundation for what you want to build for tomorrow. But you know, most importantly, in, represented by this cube, it's fully containerized. And it's deployable on most of the common technologies, the cloud environments, such, uh, within 24 to 48 hours. And again, you know, I do want to remind you that while most of the intelligence technologies in use today cannot render more than a billion documents at a time, that's where Open Fabric is just getting started. So I've said a lot of words uh, about it, and, and now I just want to show you some of the things that you can do inside of Open Fabric that demonstrate why this is a game changer as a development platform for your next technology development. So I have an analyst, and the analyst is going to walk through some things on some of the tools and screens that are already included inside of Open Fabric. And what I want to show you is some of the things that used to be hard that are now made easy by Equitas Open Fabric, just as a core capability in your new product design. 
And so first, Open Fabric reads, processes, analyzes, and understands most all of the data types that are already in your information stores or that are available to you in the government intelligence space. You can simply point to data, uh, sort of a point and shoot. Uh, you can query other systems. There are countless APIs, or in the case of what I'm going to show you right now, you can t simply take a folder that's representative of different data types and you can drag and drop it into the system. Now, while they're dragging and dropping of this particular folder, I want to remind you that just to just show you some of the, the, the power of what's already in the system is we're taking a folder that contains PDFs, PowerPoints, Word documents, spreadsheets, a few uh, delimited data files, and we're just dumping them into an analytic stack that reads each and every character of each and every file at speeds of 30 pages per core per second to ingest, analyze, correlate, and convert this data into a collection of schemas and ontologies that allow this data to be used in nearly any way that you can envision once it's all in the system. So once the data is schemed, that exact same data can now, is now available to determine all kinds of things that you might find important, whether it's to look at pattern of life or whether you want to look at notional centrality and betweenness or uh, that same data now in a geospatial format or that same data now, if you really want to get to human understanding, as a thematic cluster and it produces new insights, that same data, no matter how you take a, a, a look at it. So again, uh, you know, we we're showing you how you can drag and drop data. I do want to remind you that there are other facets of Equitas, uh, of, the, of Open Fabric. And that's that in addition to one side being its ability to reach out, touch, and unattrib acquire social media, at will without leaving a footprint. It also can go and be an OSINT tool or a knowledge management tool or a big data intelligence tool. And one of the ones that we're particularly proud of is the integrated analytics and all of the tools and applications necessary to analyze uh, full motion video or other video type files imagery and from that, not only analyze it, but develop metadata that now is also brought into Graph that allows you to take videos and turn them into insight that's now combined with all of your other data. So, you know, this is our quick little demo of tools, but I want you to think that if all of this is already in there and Open Fabric is available for you to design your own solution with, what would you do with it? So what, what we're going to do is we're going to answer a, a few questions uh, that are coming in on the stream. Uh, and while we get set up for that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show a quick video. And uh, we will be back in just a minute with a few of our team and we'll address some of the questions that are coming in now. See you in a minute. Civilizations throughout history have always relied on advancements in science, mathematics, and engineering to build on and maintain the promise of tomorrow. But science and technology must be open and honest and free of concealed motivations and social engineering to control us. Technology must enable us, not constrain us, and provide us with better choices and more freedoms on how we apply it to our lives and our future. Some offer science with strings attached, or they use it to control what we do, what we see, and limit our vision of tomorrow. At Equitus, we maintain vigilance on the core principles of science needed to allow us to control our own future. Technology that enables us to deter, defend, and defeat the next major threat to our people and our ideals. We deliver an ecosystem for true data convergence that you control. Open architecture, open standard, open scaling. 
a data ecosystem that is not reliant on a patchwork of outdated tools designed not to communicate. A data ecosystem that is not reliant on those who actively seek to limit our option for tomorrow. Equitas is AI, machine learning, and powerful intelligence capabilities that you control. Equitas was true hyperconvergence without the strings attached. Equitas is here, ready today, and built for tomorrow's battlefield. Hey, welcome back. And right now we're going to do a little bit of Q&A uh, and answer some of the questions that have come in from social media. Uh, I'm joined by Daniel Hildreth, who's our analytical sciences lead. Uh, I'm also joined by Patrick Kingoff, Kingoff who is our director of client success and Drew Brooks, who is Director of Business Development. So we've had a few questions come in. Uh, we're trying just to do them a little bit randomly and not necessarily cherry pick any. I have uh, Lily from our Business Development uh, team who's gonna read a couple of questions and we'll uh, do our best to answer them. So Lily, uh, what's the first question? Sure, so hello everyone. The first question I have is the data fabric capable of ingesting live data and informing the user in real time? I'm gonna lean that over to you. Sure, yeah. sure. Uh, it's a great question actually, and um, in general the answer to that is yes. So our system is capable of uh, interfacing with you know MQ streams that you're familiar with, ActiveMQ, RapidMQ, uh, ingesting those into our triple store, and as soon as we write that data into the triple store, we can communicate via WebSocket with our front-end platforms to uh, you know, create uh, notifications for users or, or alerts or things of that nature. So yeah, we're, we're totally, uh, totally capable of supporting that, that functionality. Okay, yeah, and I, and I wanna add something to that. You know, one of the things that when we talk about the data fabric, we are talking about a graph data fabric, but then each of the user interfaces that we develop also has the ability without it going into the triple store to be able to interact with that data. For instance, the geospatial uh, system, uh, all, the, all that has the ability to live stream uh, air traffic, uh, uh, ship transponders, really any type of streaming data that you want, that you don't necessarily want going into the data fabric, but that you just want it in the tools themselves. So that's covered as well. And uh, Lily, what's the next question that we have? Sure, it's who owns the data? Ah, I'm gonna take that one. You know, one of the fundamental premises of everything that we've done was to counter this narrative that when a tech company develops technology, they own the data. So from day one, it has always been our, our ethos that it's your data. It's your data before analytics. It's your data when it's in the graph data fabric. It's your data post analytics. And as we designed the system, we designed each and every interface to allow you to be able to repurpose the data as you see fit, both in its native state and also in its transformed state as a result of analytics. And that's what makes this open fabric. So I, I, hope, I, I hope I've answered that with a little bit of clarity. Uh, what's the uh, next question we have? Next is, how is open fabric priced? Oh. And uh, Drew, you want to talk about pricing a little bit? Um, sure, I can. Uh, really, uh, for us, the open fabric price is uh, built into a per license per user. Uh, for us, it's really customizable uh, for whatever the organization is trying to accomplish. Um, it's also very scalable, so all the way down to a couple of users, uh, uh, all the way up to a complete enterprise uh, capability. Okay. Yeah, one of the other things that, uh, that we're doing very, very differently with Open Fabric is pricing it as like a, an enterprise level SDK or an enterprise level license. I'll give you an example. If you have a, uh, an army contract for intelligence and you need a data fabric to be able to power your tools, we can actually uh, negotiate a single, uh, a single uh, software as a service enterprise license to cover that regardless of the size. And it actually, it makes it very, uh, very efficient in being able to get that intelligence system through to completion. So we, uh, we offer licenses that can go for a particular contract, for a particular customer, 
for a product that you might want to design or for your entire company. And then we also have the traditional Equitas pricing that Drew discussed, which is if you want to just deploy it on a limited basis, uh, a per seat basis. So hope that uh, hope that helped. Uh, next question. Can you only use static data? That's a good that's a good question indeed. Um, this pertains a little bit to the the previous question I answered, uh, but I'll say in general. Whether or not we handle static data or dynamic data depends largely on the level of depth or superficiality you want to engage with your data. So if you're looking to create live visualizations of data streams, let's say that's something of course we can support uh, when we're talking about just directly transforming data into a visualization. If you're looking for something more like deep, uh, complicated analytics, usually what we do is we take that dynamic data, put it in a buffer, ingest it into our system, and then we would, uh, we would analyze it after it's ingested. So whether you do static or dynamic really just depends on what specifically you're looking for out of the data, and particularly the analytics. Okay. Very good, next question. Okay, um, is the data still siloed in a relational database? I'll take that one. Okay. Um, that's a great question, and the answer is no in our case. We use, um, a, a fundamentally at the bottom of our stack, we have a triple store that's based on a Cumulo, which is like an industry standard, uh, database solution, um, but it's fundamentally not a relational database, which makes uh, the performance of things like our recursive queries way easier. It drastically improves data locality in the context of graph storage, which a lot of our competitors, you know, they build graph stores, but they build them on top of relational databases, and they, unfortunately for them, they suffer all the consequences of using a relational database. Yeah, I, I'm going to add to that a little bit. Um, you know, it took us a long time to build uh, to build Equitas Five. Um, and part of the reason was, instead of taking existing technologies and trying to enhance them to meet the needs of tomorrow, we, we really did a start from scratch uh, approach. Uh, we were not wedded to any particular technology. We were not wedded to any particular tools. And when we found that there was a, a theoretical, even a theoretical limitation to the math that we could do with this graph data fabric, we made it a hard decision to, to fundamentally rewrite or recreate anything that would have brought in a, a limitation for the future. And, and why that's important is because there's some amazing products out there. And, and uh, there are some products, products that I'm, you know, I, I really enjoy. And when we talk about things like IBM i2 Analyst Notebook, or we talk about systems like Palantir or Raytheon Fox 10, a lot of tradecraft goes into the development of those systems. And they look good, and the users are happy with them. But then there's that math problem that's underneath them, which is what do they do when they get to a billion records? Well, RDBM, RD, you know, RDBMS has that limitation. And, and that is just a fundamental one that's widespread across the, the entire intelligence discipline right now, where pretty much all of our intelligence systems, even the new ones, are based on yesterday's technology because that's what they were heavily invested in. So when you start with something like Open Fabric, you can actually take that and put that underneath these systems, and now they truly are scalable, and the customer hasn't lost the trade craft. So I guess what I'm saying is, is that there are some great tools out there. We're not competing with those. What we're trying to do is enable them to get to the level of efficiency that's necessary to really engage in next generation intelligence, and that's what Open Fabric does for you. So, uh, next question. Okay. Uh, someone has asked, can I use Analyst Notebook on top of Equitas Open Fabric? Okay. Um, that's actually a good one. And, you know, uh, so Patrick runs our client services. We have clients already who are using A and B and others. And uh, my answer is yes. I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, we don't like to be a tool company. We, we're the underlying data fabric and we have different uh, entry points. So. Uh, the cool thing about working with Equitas is we provide you all the entry points for social media, big data, uh, video analytics, anything that you'd want, but we're also able to plug and play um, with, with other entry points and with other tools. So the answer is yes. Yep. And we're already doing that and our clients are already doing that. So uh, well, what other, what other questions do we have? 
Um, what about legacy applications? Uh, yeah, I think that sort of fits into the uh, into the analyst notebook uh, question. So, um, and I know that I know that you and your team are having to integrate the Equitas data fabric in with a number of ones up at Fort Meade and others, mm -hmm. and uh, you know. Um, are we able to get through that? I mean, what, how are you guys handling any of the legacy data? I know there's uh, cyber data, there's mm -hmm. other types of data, the, some of the activities data. Yeah. Um, do you want to, anything you want to add on that? Or? Yeah, so all that, uh, all that support's already included uh, when you have a contract with us. So um, the first thing I do when I get a new client is we go up, we have a face-to-face -face conversation. What do you have right now? Uh, where do you want to get to? and then we put a process in place to, to make that happen. So if you already have APIs, if you already have data sources, if you already have systems that you like to use, um, we get a plan together to integrate those with your new Equitas data fabric. Um, so it's a very smooth process, um, and then you're able to utilize legacy data, legacy systems, and make them work together much better. Okay, well, thank you. Okay. What else you got? How do you train operators, clients, et cetera? I'll take that. Uh, yeah, please, <laughs> please, because you do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we've uh, we've got um, a really cool process. So um, you know, if you want to be really hands off, we have computer based training. Uh, it'll get you through all the systems, how all the buttons work, uh, and give you a good base level of how to utilize uh, the system. We also have. Um, analysts and trainers up to the TSSCI level. Uh, we have a CI Poly with a couple of our, our trainers as well. So we're able to conduct training at any clearance level that you would need. And so what I prefer and what I've had the most success with, with my customers, with my clients, is to do a hybrid approach. Um, so we allow our clients to do the computer-based training before we come in um, and, and give them the advanced training. We'll spend about three days to a week uh, doing advanced training, then working on actual problem sets that our clients are working on on a day-to-day -day basis. So by the end of that three days or by the end of that week training, you are utilizing the Equitas platform to solve problems more efficiently um, than you would beforehand. So at the end of the week, uh, you're actually able to give your boss a report on a problem set that you would have worked on that would usually take you a month, month and a half to do, and we're able to complete that in about a week. Good. Yeah, we also uh, recently built a new uh, training uh, a training facility upstairs here in uh, Clearwater, Florida, which uh, during winter is pretty uh, pretty appealing to some of our clients to to come down here and uh, get away from the busyness and cold and and come and get training. Now on the on the technical side, you know, uh, which is not necessarily my area. I do know that there is a there is a learning curve for the adaptation of this data fabric to your existing or your planned platform, but I think most of the work and almost everything that we've done is is consistent with a lot of the standards that your developers and engineers should already be familiar with, although I will say that there is a level of sophistication and modernity in the design of the system that you might want to consider bringing in some people from outside of the defense technology world because there is a generational shift in some of the technologies that we're using that are not prevalent in the current RDBMS and, and uh, legacy ways of doing analytics. I don't know if you want to chime in on that because I think that's important. Yeah, I mean the only real thing I'll add to that is to say that um, you know, of course, client services is the main point of contact uh, here at Equitas if you are looking for training or something along those lines. But if you have deeper technical questions about how to integrate, um, we can always put you in touch with somebody who deeply understands the way that these systems operate uh, to get you off the ground, you know, as quickly as we possibly can. Yeah, usually with every uh, with every licensing and every fielding, there is client services takes the uh, takes the lead. And then uh, Daniel and Michael and their team provides the the real deep technical experts in the development and uh, and in the analytics and all that to be able to back that up to be able to help it to become the product that the prime contractor needs it to be because we don't expect that Equitas is a hundred percent solution for your specific contract. What we think and, and what we readily do 
is within 48 hours, often, as long as the, the, the resources are provisioned, we have your 85 to 90% solution already up and running. And now his team can work with your team to get them developing your own solution that you want to take forward to the client. And Patrick's team can help you to generate training programs that get the client to be able to use the new technology in your way, the way that you want them and in accordance with the contract. So uh, Lily, do we have any, uh, any more questions? Um, I have two more. Okay. One is, do you offer any tests, evaluations, or pilots for organizations? Yeah, and uh, I'm going to uh, address that in two flavors. And if Drew wants to talk about uh, TEPS, that's, uh, that's something else altogether. So in the traditional licensing model, and, and Drew can talk about that, you know, we have a series of things and he can, he'll cover that. But open fabric is a different approach for us. It's, it's the first time that we're recognizing and we're just formalizing a method for a company that wants to build its own intelligence product that has its own flavor, its own intellectual property. If you're a company that wants to compete with Silicon Valley in the defense world going forward and you're about to create an intelligence system or intelligence solution for the market, it's, it's really important that, you know, that we provide you the, all, of the, all of the resources and, and to be able to do that. And that's a little different from the sort of cookie cutter technology evaluation and trials. So what I would recommend on a development type evaluation that you discuss with us, we sit down, we figure out how you want to use it, we figure out what technical resources are going to be required to support you in that development. But in all other ways, we have this, uh, we have a few different ways that we do business. And Drew, do you want to talk about that? Sure. Yeah, so I can talk about the technical evaluation programs that we offer. Uh, really, we're looking at, you know, to get the end user, you know, the best uh, best of the breed we're looking at a minimum of six months uh, all the way up to a year for an evaluation uh, really to give us a time to integrate together to you know build out what is your problem set uh, as well as you know working in tandem with Patrick uh, figuring out how you want to build out your use case what is the problem that you're trying to solve uh, and then we can like Rob mentioned integrate with the technical team to ensure that you know if you do have certain data sets or or uh, or things that you're looking to integrate as far as the tool capability, uh, we're, we're able to do that and we're, we're highly scalable with that too. So uh, any of the evaluation programs, uh, like I mentioned, it can be you know a couple of users using our tool set with our uh, open fabric capability, uh, as well as you know we can build it out into uh, a couple of units uh, coupled with an enterprise system. So you can get you know edge units, uh, forward deployed units talking to the enterprise uh, and vice versa. So it's a, it'd be a great use case uh, for the unit as a whole. Okay, thank you. And Lily, question? Yep, last question is, is data integration an additional cost? Uh, yeah, I could take that. Uh, so no, the answer in short, uh, I think we alluded to a couple of uh, ways that we go about uh, integrating data and you know, Patrick touched on it quite a bit is initially when we build out these uh, the, the capability we talk with the end user what's the problem set that you're trying to you know tackle uh, we'd like to work with you uh, as far as you know integration of data uh, and then be able to help you solve that problem initially so everything comes you know you get the full support throughout the duration if you run into a problem or you're trying to integrate certain data sets you you inherently get that support yeah let me give you a put a sort of put that in context you know uh, if you go to your typical large tech company and you try to put together a solution, there are, you know, 200 line items associated with it. All of the different codes and SKUs of the different software. You have all these budgets for different people at different points and architects and this and that. We're, we're a, a platform or software as a service and uh, there generally is one SKU. That's the price. And it, what happens is we become responsible for, uh, for getting that platform up and running. We then provide the people and expertise to get your data moving in and out of the system 
and then ultimately we turn it over to you and we do have customers and we find that there is a, a benefit for us getting a couple of FTEs one technical one analyst mm -hmm. that understand the very nature of the system to work side by side with your developers your technologists and your analysts but ultimately I'll give you an example if you if you went an intelligence contract that has 50 people on it and a technology component I would expect that 48 of the people are going to be yours and uh, including all the program management and all that and what we do is we embed two people who are deeply familiar not only with all of the aspects of what the of Equitas and Equitas Open Fabric do, but also are tied in with the new enhancements that are continually coming out. And that is something that I didn't cover in the original uh, in the in the original uh, session of this. But because it is software as a service platform as a service or an embedded software agreement or uh, some sort of enterprise licensing, any Equitas customer will now and forever, as they are a PaaS or SaaS customer, receive every enhancement that we make. And if you were to, you know, offline come over and uh, get a tour of us and, and meet us over in Clearwater, and we show you some of the things that we're doing, uh, AI-based graph data fabric is just the beginning. You know, what we are doing uh, at this point is we are containerizing, reducing, and refining this to the point where when we talk about edge analytics in the future, we're talking about small computational resources that do things that only five years ago would have required a, a, a data center. You know, a, a, an example of that is one of the things that we embedded in it was because we rewrote it, it's so much more efficient now. I remember when just our social media deep analytics math took an entire server rack because of all the Hadoop map reduce and all of that. As all of that has been rewritten in entirely new ways, the level of efficiency of the code is just profound and we're getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and extensively more, more powerful, which brings me to a little bit of forward leaning. As we sit here today, um, as we sit here today, we are about to experience new things, quantum computing. Uh, some of the next generation compute that's going to be coming out of the uh, new series of NVIDIA GPU and other levels of efficiency and power that will make computational cycles so much faster. We're already written for that. We are written and continually writing for tomorrow's resources, not just for today's. And that is part of our commitment back to this whole American company building tech specifically for national security. And uh, so I think that uh, unless we have any more questions, Lily, any more questions? No, that's it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up and say thank you for, uh, for attending our, our live event. Uh, we would love to have you come down and visit us here in, uh, in Clearwater. Um, you can get our information off of our website, uh, which I'll put up in just a, just a minute. And uh, we uh, hope we have the opportunity to work with you. So thank you, everyone, and goodbye.